Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you, those of you who are online, to First Congregational Church in Mountain Home. I am Gary Smith, a fill-in preacher today for Daryl Schramm, past roommate in college, seminary friend, and longtime associates together. <laughs> I come to welcome you and to invite you to worship with us this day. This is the place, and now is the time, here and now, to receive God's presence in order to open our minds, to minister to each other, to have our spiritual needs met, and to have God lead us into God's future, to help us see the world and life with a light guiding us into God's future. This is the time, now is the place to experience the divine. Let us worship as we ring the bell. Good morning again, and welcome fall. <laughs> um, announcements today are in your bulletin. Uh, a special note, the diaconate is meeting on Tuesday night because of the holiday, and the rest of the bell choir, women's, women's fellowship is Friday, all women um, at noon, potluck, really good food. Uh, Roger, do you have something you want to say about Air Force Appreciation Day? Just now, I have a lot to say. <laughs> uh, you need the microphone. Wow, this is a big crowd to, today, Gary. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for filling in for uh, Pastor Darrell. And uh, you had a lot of competition out there with the rain, but uh, everybody showed up, so it was a great crowd. Um, Air Force Appreciation Day, I need your help. Uh, you have done a great job in baskets uh, for giveaways to uh, sit on the table. Uh, we've got that covered very, very, very well. Uh, Air Force Appreciation Day is this coming Saturday, by the way, if you didn't know. And uh, I've got a lot of people that's uh, volunteered, but we still need some more help for volunteers. The sign-up sheet is back there, so uh, one more plea for the, uh, to the congregation to uh, sign up for an hour or so. Uh, now during the parade, we've got a lot of people that's doing double duty uh, for other booths, for the parade and everything. So if you could sign up early, we would really appreciate that. So, uh, so thank you for the support for the baskets. I think we have enough. You did a great job with that. And now we want you to do a great job for uh, the sign up and being out there to uh, support our congregation, our church. And after Air Force Appreciation Day, uh, Rally Day is Sunday. Um, I know Betty's not here. There was a, a death in the Al's family, so that's why she's not here, but I'm sure she would be. Anybody want to talk about Sunday school? Okay. Are you duking it out? <laughs> okay. Um, the next Sunday starts the Sunday school program. And uh, Please read about the new adult Sunday school program if you, you know, in case you were iffy about coming or not. That might help make up your mind. The proposed bylaws change, we have to notify you of that two months ahead, so please read that for yourself. If there's a committee you're interested in uh, being on, please let the uh, nominating committee know. That would be Richard Bromling, Susan Musler, and Mr. Anderson? Yes, sure. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I'll pull you off the hook. <laughs> okay. Um, as for the proposed bylaw change, uh, the subcommittee that oversees the church endowment funds, the trust, trustees will appoint two, not less than two members to oversee. So we want to put some more members on that particular one, but we have to change the bylaws to do it. So this is the uh, first of the official announcements that will be published for the next couple months. Um, the Evangelism and Membership Committee, or Growth Committee, and this is right out of the bylaws, says there will be up to six members on the Evangelism and Membership Growth Committee, up to two of whom shall be appointed annually by the Church Council for a term of three years. The committee will elect its own chairperson. The committee is responsible for promotion of new membership. Uh, what we are looking for and what the, what's in the bulletin and in the loop, uh, they're looking, to, we want to revive this thing. It hasn't been, I mean, I've been here for, what, almost 15 years now? And as far as I know, this committee has never been active. We want to put the committee back together, but we need your help to do it. We need volunteers to come up and actually sit on the, on the membership committee and then, you know, do what needs to be done. You know, I'm not sure who was on the old committee, but if you are interested, please let one of the, uh, the church council members know. You can let, you know, Mr. Bromley know back there and he'll inform us. So that's where we're at at the moment. We're looking for you guys to come up and, and you know, help us out and go have some fun. Thank you, Polly. No problem. Thank you. Um, the rest of the bulletin speaks for itself. The pop tabs, big blue bucket. So, are there any other announcements? I knew it. <laughs> Got all my paperwork right up there. Oh, is that your glasses? <laughs> I'm glad. Those are my spectacles and my little cheat sheet. Good morning, friends and neighbors. How's everybody doing this fine Sunday morning? Last Sunday, no, last Sunday. Last Wednesday, we had a blood drive uh, here at the church. It was moderately well attended. It was, it's rather difficult to, uh, to fill all the bags because it's right in the middle of the week, right in the middle of the work day. <laughs> Plus, the Elks Lodge had one like two days before, and they were folded up. But anyway, we had a, we had a successful um, blood drive. Uh, Joy, Scale, and Eddie, thank you so very much for, for helping out. They, they just, both guns roaring, and, and life was good. We had really good participation from uh, the, the Lions Club. Any Lions out there? No Lions? I'm not one, but anyway. Uh, yeah, my sister Kendall, she's a lion, lioness, lioness, lionette. And she put out a shotgun blast, so we got a f quite a few, you know, we got some uh, walk-ins from, from the Lions Club, and that was amazing. And uh, one thing I do want to say is uh, we, we, we got 19 units, that's what they call them, units of blood. You could either just give up a bag of blood, or you can get connected to the, uh, the Benford 5000 XL suck and slurp o uh, uh machine that you're like plugged in for 45 minutes and they'll pump blood out and they'll do something with it and they'll spin it and cook it and put it back in you and all of a sudden you have two bags one bag of platelets and one bag of corpse suckles not corpse suckles that word I blame that on Dick Heron that's how he pronounced it <laughs> but anyway we got 19 units all together and I had a serious God moment. Um, the person in charge of it, her name is, uh, her name is Nicole. Just a little spit of a woman, uh, a mother, a wife, uh, a survivor of cancer. Boy, cancer just run her through. I mean, she was maybe 30, if that. And she had bounced back and here she was in a frail way 
And she rolled up a sleeve. She literally upped our, she was in charge of the program. She rolled a sleeve up and gave up a pint. And in talking with her afterward, I thanked her so much. And she says, well, anything I can do, I can. Because during the process of my cancer treatment, I went through 42 units of blood. And I just was in awe of this woman. Totally in awe of this woman. She was so upbeat and happy and just go, 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 go. And, uh, and then she, she told me that. And it, it, it blew my mind. And, and we prayed uh, outside of the church by the Rose Garden. Uh, and I prayed for her. And I just prayed that all the, the bags, the, the 19 bags that we got, will we'll go towards the greater good. Anyway, again, I'll shut up. And uh, thank you for those who showed up and rolled up sleeve. We'll see you in four months. Are there any I, other announcements, Susan? Uh, yes, I put two buckets of nectarines in the fellowship hall. Please take some. They're the last off my trees, and I have been canning. And I am tired of canning, so please empty the two buckets. And there's bags out there. Anyone else? All right, if, uh, if not, please join me in the call to worship. Our God, in the beginning you gave life, color, and harmony to the universe. And everything moves by your Most of all, God, you move in the minds and lives of believers. You give vision and insight, revealing the truth to us. You stir the sleeping conscience and rouse the dormant mind. So move now from the mind and the conscience that the world might be you and the world to us. Let us read the invocation, please. Eternal God, we thank you for this house of prayer in which you bless those who worship you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth that our consciences may be quickened by your presence, our minds nourished by your truth, our hearts open to your love, and our wills surrendered to your purpose. May we be gathered in adoration as we ascribe glory, praise, and honor to you alone. Amen. Please rise if you're able in hymn number 16.
while you're up, uh, stir around and greet your neighbor. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry to uh, delay uh, the service here. I was just greeting. I'd love to take the time to greet each and every one of you personally because you all are such special people to me, and I appreciate the opportunity of being with you. At this time, we want to invite the children to come up for a children's moment. We have a, and we we should call it youth moment. I think because any anyone that would like to come on up. Oh, come, thank you, boys. Uh, and, and do we sit down up here now? Okay. Appreciate it very much. We'll have a youth moment together today. So I want to know, who are you? A child. A child? Uh, youth. A youth? Uh, a youth. Do you have a name? Lola. Lola? Van. Van? Wrangle. No. Are, but you're, you haven't told me who you are yet. Think of something else. Who are you? Go ahead. Uh, I'm a 13 year old boy. Okay. 14 year old boy. 10 year old girl. Okay. Are you are you youth and you gave me your name? Are you a student? What does that mean? Who are you as a student? Fifth grader. Oh, fifth grader. Uh, academic athlete. Academic athlete. Whoa, wait a minute. We got to find out. What does that mean? I don't know. It sounds good. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're in athletics. Yeah. Which one? Football. Football. And what would you play in football? Quarterback. A quarterback. Whoa. We need you at Boise State. <laughs> okay. And what about you? A uh, child of God. A child of God. Where did you come up with this? Has taught me well. <laughs> Your mother has taught you. She really has. This is awesome. Well, is there anything else you want to tell me about yourselves? Who are you? I wanted to tell you this is really something that we all work on our whole lives. Who am I? And what am I about? And what am I supposed to do? And what am I supposed to be? And it's, you've already started that. You're on this journey, and the most important part of this is just what you told me. We are children of God. We are Christians, 
and we're going to be open to God's leading us in the future to be and do what God directs us. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we ask for your blessing upon these youth in their pursuit of their activities, but most importantly in their pursuit of your presence and your will for their lives. Be with them in the good times and bad, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for coming up here this morning. Creator God, who formed our world out of your own integrity and power, we find it hard to come as the church we once were, as we are separated, have been separated from each other, from the things that have come between us, we seek to be your church again now and ask for your presence to bring us into a family of faith together that we might be loving and serving the whole of humanity. Lead us into a new purpose to receive power, not power to threaten or destroy, but power to restore reconcile and bring unity help us to declare your glory that all may see and hear forgive us when we become cynical bring us to faith in the spirit of truth we acknowledge that we live in a modern babble where words are used to conceal meaning, where there's so many different places to get what we are seeking in terms of truth and news. We ask that you lead us into the truth of your word, that we might become a people with integrity, bringing peace. Help us not to confuse, but to understand and to be understood. Help us to be trusting again as we create a new integrity together. We ask, O oh God, that you minister to those in need this day especially those that we have just mentioned, that your spirit of healing might rest upon them. Encompass us all in your spirit. Comfort and sustain the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, that we might together be a loving, faithful congregation. These things we pray after the likeness of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to give an offering this day. We are those who have been blessed by our Creator with talents, with laughter, with joys, 
the use of our hands, the use of our minds. People who have given and received compassion and patience and spiritual resources as well as financial resources that we might be obedient and courageous and be able to further the kingdom of God in this place. Let us receive our morning offering. The scripture lesson today, uh, the first part is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing and yet not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Now verses 11 through 15. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. 
God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of God for the people of God. A child went to Sunday school one day, and when he got home, his parents asked him, what was the lesson about today? And the child said, well, it was about this man named Moses that God put behind the enemy lines to save his people, and then he had a bridge built over the river in order for the people to cross over safely, and then he radioed in to the Air Force, and they came and bombed the river, the bridge, in order to keep the Egyptians from getting to the Israelites. And the parents said, is, is that really what the teacher said? And the child said, well, no, but if I told you what the teacher said, you'd never believe it. <laughs> Our lectionary scripture today is about the calling of Moses. Moses encountered God through a burning bush and calls Moses back to go to Egypt to free the Israelites. And Moses is quite honestly reluctant, and rightfully so, why me? Who am I that I should go? And Moses makes excuses why he's unable. If they ask me who sent me, who should I say? God answers Moses, I am who I am. Other interpretations of this title or name for God include, I am because I am, I will be what I will be or what I cause to be. The emphasis is upon God being an entity in and of God's self and God reveals God's self to us as God chooses to. And we usually understand who God is by the activity of God. So then Moses says, if they don't believe me, what do I do? And God tells him, throw down your staff. And when he does, it becomes a snake. But then Moses says, I am slow of speech. Send somebody else. And God says, okay, you can take your brother Aaron with you to speak. Now, if Moses had only recalled his birth, he might have been more understanding as to his mission in life, who he was, and remember that God is always with him. You recall his background. Out of the fear of a minority, the Jews might become mighty, the powerful Pharaoh oppresses them. This fear gave way to hate, to cruelty, and eventually murder. Soon a decree was issued, every boy born to the Jews must be killed. It's interesting to note that four women are mentioned in saving baby Moses. Shepra, Pira, Pharaoh's daughter, and Miriam, Moses' sister. The two brave midwives, Shepra and Pura, defied Pharaoh's orders and allowed male babies to live. Some Christian commentators have noticed that their actions may be the first in recorded history as examples of civil disobedience towards an oppressive government. The Hebrews keep increasing in number. When Pharaoh asks, how is this happening? The midwives say, well, the babies are born before we get there. 
The people of Israel grew in numbers while their working conditions deteriorated. Another order is given by Pharaoh. Every boy that is born must be thrown into the Nile. The scene is just too grisly to imagine helpless babies grieving parents. And we are reminded of a parallel story in the New Testament where a tyrant ordered the killing of male babies. Just as Herod failed to kill the one child he was after, so too did Pharaoh fail to murder the one who would become the greatest threat. Obviously, the Pharaoh did not know that God was behind this. Another Hebrew boy is born and his parents hide him. And in the New Testament, there's a reference to this time in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of Pharaoh's edict. Then when his mother could no longer hide him, she created a floating basket and put him in it in the bank of the Nile. There's irony and symbolism in this part of the story. The word for basket, teba, that will shelter the baby, Moses is the same it is the same word as the word ark the baby's basket is an ark floating safely on the waters of the nile this tiny waterproof ark eventually becomes for israel an encouraging reminder of how god has saved them before the baby's basket floating on the water became a symbol of God's power to save his people from the deepest waters of death and despair. As baby Moses is floating among the reeds, Pharaoh's daughter approaches this river of death and discovers a new life. When she sees the baby, she takes pity on it and orders him to be taken out of the basket and adopts him as her own. In essence, making him a prince in Pharaoh's household. As baby Moses has rescued his sister who was there watching, steps forward from the shadows and offers his mother to nurse the child. Pharaoh's daughters names him Moses, meaning in Egypt, I drew him out. And in Hebrew, Moses means deliverance. Therefore, the literal meaning of the name Moses is saved, delivered by God. Maybe your name and my name could be Moses as well because we have been drawn out from the waters of baptism, from the dangers of sin and death by God's Son, Jesus Christ. We know that we are like Moses having been drawn from those waters and are freed and delivered in faith with joy and anticipation of what God has in store for us. Think about the implications of this story. Obviously, Pharaoh did not know God with whom he was dealing. In his typical human calculations, he feared the size and the strength of the Jewish people and sought to reduce their numbers. Ask Goliath if size matters. A giant versus a little boy with a slingshot. Ask Gideon what difference numbers make 300 versus 1,000. Ask the boy with bread and fish how much the Lord can do with a small amount. The Pharaoh sought to wipe out the Israelite community. What well, one baby got through, and that one baby was enough for God to free an entire nation. This Exodus story serves as a backdrop for God's providence. 
the baby Moses is miraculously spared. The very waters that are to bring death becomes his transport to providential setting that God had for him, namely that he would be discovered and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. There's a larger pattern here of evil men who want to snuff out God's chosen people. In every era, someone has made it his mission, and every one of them has failed. From Pharaoh to Hitler, the Jews have been targeted. But not just the Jews, Christians also, by small-minded, frightened tyrants who seek to extinguish God's messengers and God's people, Pharaoh, Mechanizer, Nero, Trajan, Stalin, radical Muslims, ISIS. When in the New Testament, the Sanhedrin was weighing the options against the early followers of Christ, Old Gamaliel cautioned them, saying, I tell you, keep away from these men and not let them alone, and leave them alone, because if this plan is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's of God, you will not be able to overthrow it. And in that case, you may even be finding yourself fighting against God. The Pharaoh did not have Gamaliel's wisdom given him, so he tried to crush the people of God who were living in his midst. He was the first in a long time of tyrants in every age who have endeavored to fight against God. Have you ever asked yourself, who am I that I should fulfill a position or a responsibility? I've asked myself many times, who am I to be called a minister? Who am I to teach? Who are you to fulfill a board position or to stand up for justice or racial or gender equality before saying no to God? Recall who you are, a child of God, called to fulfill God's mission. And recall how God's presence has always been with you. Revisit in your memory the tough times that you faced and how God helped you over them. I've always enjoyed this poem. Earth crammed with heaven and every bush a fire with God. But only those who take off shoes see the rest sit around picking blackberries I suppose there's nothing wrong picking blackberries but we need to take our shoes off to experience the grace of God see God working throughout our lives and then be prepared to say who am I Lord what is the next step what would you like me to do today Ask yourself, who am I? What is God calling me to do and be? Amen. This morning we offer a special hymn of rededication of ourselves as we sing about the Exodus event, would you sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5? It's printed in your bulletins. Please stand.
Again, thank you for allowing me to come share with you on this special Lord's Day. And now may the peace of Christ go with you, the love of God encompass you, and God's Spirit be with you always from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.